Hello guys, welcome back to a brand new video and welcome back to Premier League Predictions. Um, what can I say about the Premier League? First, let's start off with the big story, which why I'm starting off with Spurs' stadium behind me. Um, Pochino's been sacked by Tottenham. Um, I was a bit surprised by that, and I know we've had a bad away record, and you know results haven't been going their way. But I think there were teams worse in the Premier League. Um, that managers I ain't got the sack yet, um, but I was very surprised of the timing of it. Um, obviously, the new man in charge, Jose Mourinho, and this is the one thing I'm questioning about the Tottenham board about and that is apparently the conversation with Joseph Mourinho or Joseph Mourinho's team um, is going on for about seven weeks or so. Um, one question I have got for the Tottenham board, if the talks was going on for that long, why did you sack Palacino near the end of the international break. Why not do it at the start? The players know where they stand and you know but a few of the Tottenham players, you know, are thinking probably, you know, feeling a bit confused, which is fair enough. You know, you started off this week um last international games with Pochettino as your manager and then you're ending up with Jason Mourinho as your manager. Um, you know, but that's my question for the Tottenham ball. Why did you leave it so late uh, what, before sacking uh, Pochettino? Um, but then how quick they brought Mourinho in and they had it lined up. So less than 12 hours between sacking a manager and, you know, um, bringing one in. Um, very surprising, very, you know, how quick it went. I've been in talks for a while, so you know it's expected to happen. Um, but yeah, that's just my one question for the Tottenham board. Why did you not do that at the beginning of the international break instead of the end? Um, Joseph Mourinho's got an interesting job ahead of himself. Knights of uh, Ericsson and Danny Rose and a few of the other players do want to leave Tottenham. I know Ericsson's desperate to go to Real Madrid. Um, you know, let's not know about that. He has been in the wind, you know, saying, I want to leave, I want to leave. It's, I think this window is available to clubs on a free bit as well. So, Joseph Mourinho was to keep him. He has not got long at all, but I think that was a move one player that leaves. Uh, Danny Rose, I don't think he will suit Joseph Mourinho's style of play, so I think also he will leave, um, possibly at the end of his contract. Um, but, you know, all these questions over Joe say and all these questions will be answered over the next few weeks, I'm sure. But anyway, guys, you know what I'm trying to do, try to get to a thousand subs, come mate. Um, best way you can help me do that is by sharing my channel, uh, letting people know about my channel, sharing my videos. I have got my own Football Manager series coming up as well. Um, my first video for that series will come up at the end of this video. Um, so if you like a bit of football manager, um, you know, obviously feel free to subscribe anyway, but um, yeah, you like a bit of football manager, you definitely like this series, especially I'm doing it in my own town as well, um, my own club, um, you know, and you're going to see a few twists and turns in this series, especially things that you might not see in the day and age of football managers, but I would still do it if I was a professional football manager. But anyway, guys, you know what to do. Subscribe for more. Thanks for watching. And let's go. So the first game I'm going to talk about is West Ham versus Tottenham. I just literally addressed on, you know, Tottenham about Jason Mourinho. Drawing 1-1 one -one with Sheffield United, the previous uh, result. Uh, so you, you, you've got to look at Sheffield United now, I think anyone has to really, that they are a top uh, 10 Premier League team. I'm going to say this now, um, 
obviously Sheffield United do top 10 and then struggle next season. Um, same as Wolves are done, they're struggling. I'm not saying struggling as rele relegation candidates, I'm saying struggling as in struggling to get back into the top 8 or wherever they did finish, I think it was 8. Um, but, you know, great result for Sheffield United, disappointing day for Tottenham. Um, obviously, the end of the Pochettino era for Tottenham. Um, but we're going up against West Ham this weekend. West Ham loses 3 0 away to Burnley. Um, and yet, West Ham fans aren't happy about Pellegrini. Will he be the next one out the exit door? Um, I know there's a few managers, surely the alarm bells are ringing. Um, but as far as this result goes, I'm going to give it to Tottenham because no matter who the new manager comes in, they always have that magical spell. And I'm going to go for a 2-1 Tottenham win. Just a kind of guy Solskjaer. Um, my next one is Arsenal versus Southampton. Southampton losing 2-1 at home to Everton. Um, Arsenal losing 2-0 away to Leicester. Yet again, Southampton is another one out the exit door. The managers, um, you know, Ryan Bell starts to ring. He's already said that he's going to go back to um, basics. It's going to be very interesting style to play against Arsenal if he does go that way. Um, but yeah, surely he's another ma uh, manager that the alarm bells are ringing. Um, Arsenal. Um, how do I summon Arsenal up at this current stage? <laughs> um, I seriously can't believe I'm that serious. Arsenal fans want Unai Emery out the door now. Arsenal fans, I've literally got one thing to say to you. You get what you give them. Um, you wanted Arsenal Wenger out, I got him out. Well, and not Emery, and because results are going your way, you want him out now as well. Um, now, obviously, I did have my own opinions back on Arsene Wenger. Um, I think Arsenal are very much like United, can only work under that one manager. Um, you know, look at Sir Alex at Man United, brilliant manager he was. He's left Man United, have failed to pick. Back up to where Sir Alex have left off. Um, Arsenal, you know, Arsenal are the same sort of boat, I think, where, you know, okay, I met um, Arsenal and God did finish below par at the end of his career. Congratulations to Arsenal and God as well, being appointed at FIFA. Um, something to do with the board. Congratulations for that. Um, but yeah, back to Arsenal. I think that Arsenal will give them what they were given. They're saying, Arsenal Wenger needs to quit now. Arsenal Wenger needs to do this. Fair enough. But now you cannot blame Unite Emery for negative playing football. You're blaming on your players last season. What's changed? As far as I'm concerned, year and a half things have been in charge. I have not seen enough players come in and out of the Arsenal door. Um, you know, let's be fair. You get, I think it's eight weeks in the summer transfer window. Um, then you get four in the winter transfer window. It's not long enough. Give Unite Emery time. Um, you know, let's look at... I know a lot of Arsenal fans, and I can see why they're saying it. But, as far as I'm concerned, I have not given them enough time. Um, you call it negative football. I can see that point of view too. But, um, you know, as I've said, it ain't going to work overnight. Um, I let, if I was an Arsenal fan, I'd probably like to see and not Emery... You know, see out his contract and then see where you're sitting. Um, another thing about Arsenal, uh, Jacka has been stripped of captaincy. He's been told he might never play for Arsenal again. So this club is in real big mess at the minute. Um, and 
you point it out at the manager, I don't think that's a problem, you know, but you've all got your own uh, thoughts and, uh, you know, please feel free to put them down in the comments below. But I spoke about this game for long enough, um, but as far as this result goes, I'll go for a one all scoreline for that one. My next one is Bournemouth versus Wolverhampton. Um, Wolverhampton beating Villa 2-1 at home. Great uh, three points for... Uh, yeah, no, I just made you on, sorry. Um, great three points for Wolverhampton. Bournemouth losing 2-1 away to Newcastle. I know for the fact that Bournemouth won one nil up in that game as well. Um, but uh, I think with Villa, and I'll speak more about Villa when we get down to him, actually. Um, but great three points for all, great derby win. Um, let's give you the result. Yeah, I know I just made you on again. I do apologise again. Um, but as far as this result goes, I'll go for a 2 0. Bournemouth win. My next one is Brighton over Albion versus Leicester City. Uh, Brighton over Albion is a 3 1 away at Old Trafford. Leicester beat in Arsenal 2 0 at home. Um, I think Brighton had a very disappointing day at Old Trafford. Um, I know Lewis Dunn picked up a yellow card. Yellow card he should have picked up sooner. That could have, uh, you know, kept the game nil nil, um, and then Dunk goes to pick up a stupid yellow card, um, and get suspended for this Leicester game. So the captain's out, um, you know. So Brighton are without their captain, so that's gonna be an interesting thing coming three o'clock Saturday. Um, Leicester two nil winners um, at home to Arsenal. Just mentioned that. Leicester are on a, whole, a really big high right now. Um, but, so, uh, how do I call this? Only trouble is with me calling this game on a Leicester City point of view is, I know. Clubs go high, 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 and then they just have a massive drop. Do I think it's going to happen to Leicester City this weekend? Uh, you know what? Because Brighton are at home and they are very strong at home, you know, beating Tottenham um, at home and beating Norwich at home as well, I'm going to call this one a draw and I'm going to go for a one all scoreline for that one. My next one is Crystal Palace versus Liverpool. Crystal Palace does a 2 0 away to Chelsea. Liverpool beating 3 1, beating Man City 3 1 at home. Um, right, I want to talk about that Liverpool game. Um, and I do understand. Great, uh, great uh, disappointing day for Palace. Oh, sorry again. Um, but great f um, three points for Chelsea. Um, if you're wondering why I'm yawning so much because I didn't get much sleep last night, but that's my problem, not yours. Um, yeah, uh, let's going to talk about that Liverpool game. Now, this is where I don't get what the Premier League or the FA are saying. We all heard at the beginning of the season, I'll try to get it out there anyway, if you follow me on social media. Handballs were going to be given deliberately or not. Fine. You know, that's the world, that's the world. How can Alexander Arnold get away with a handball and his arms out um, unnatural position if I remember rightly bounces off his arm and yet there's no handball come on Premier League if you want to use VAR use it properly I know we 
Premier League have had a meeting um, and yet we're going to somehow let fans know more about what, what we're looking at. Um, but come on Premier League, come on FA, you come up with these rules, start enforcing them. Because I saw that, the same with Daddy Elliott at the Everton game, bounced off his arm. You putting these rules in, you can't go back on your word. I mean, really, I mean, I'm surprised we're not laughing to stop Jeffrey, not already. It is so ridiculous. I saw it, um, I know Liverpool score from that, um, not going to take nothing away from the goal, but come on. Is this really what is going? Oh, I support. I'll tell you what the problem is with the VAR is your referees. Um, you know, let's say for example that um, Liverpool game. You got someone who supports. I don't know. Let's say Man United or you know Everton or you know someone that's. Oh, actually, a Liverpool support behind there. Uh, no ref. That's not a penalty. Of course it is, it bounced off his arm. As I said, you bring the rules in, handball, handball, and I remember the rules, I've watched it more than once. The handball rule is going to be given, accidental or not. Come on Premier League, start answering these questions. If you can't, the VAR is not doing their job, you know, you really have got to start making a mark. I mean... People blame the VAR for things. It's not the VAR. It's a bit of technology. I've always stated that. And I always will. Start getting people to do their jobs properly. Start using the on-field monitors. You know, the Premier League are such... I mean, when I do these sort of videos, and sometimes you might hear me part of a social media about VAR. VAR is a bit like your mobile phones. A bit like your PS4. It's a bit like your Xbox One. That's it. It records the game. A bit like when you do a video um, thing, like players coming out of the tunnel, and you film it. That's all it does. It cannot make the call. Until we've got the technology from, you know, 10, 20 years' time, and I hope it does come in, um, you've still got to leave this human factor in the VAR. Um, and that's where I stick up for it. Tell you can find me a Johnny number five, uh, you I don't know, short circuit, talking robot. Um, we still got lives the human factor into that. And to that, it's down to the Premier League and the FA. Until the Premier League start making a stand, we ain't going to move on. Um, but as far as this result goes, I'll go for a 2 0 Liverpool win. And I know Liverpool has struggled at Palace at times as well. Um, my next one is Everton versus Norwich City. Norwich losing 2 0 at home to Watford. Um, I remember watching that game, bits and pieces at least. Um, Burnley beating West Ham 3 0. And not Burnley, why am I going on about Burnley for? Um, Everton beating Southampton 2 1 away from home. Um, Marco Silva, a bit of pressure lifted possibly, but it's going to go back into this game going up against uh, newly promoted Norwich. Um, Norwich, I think, are another team that's had that honeymoon period and now it's just came crashing back down. Um, but as far as this result goes, I'll go for a very boring game and I'll go for a 0 0 scoreline for that one. My next one is. Ev uh, is Watford versus Burnley. Now I'll talk about the Burnley result. Um, Burnley beating West Ham 3-0 at home. Watford, just as you mentioned, beating Norwich 2-0 away from home. Um, great pressure, lift up Watford, lift them off the foot of the table. Um, first win. I don't think they're going to do it this weekend, though. Sorry, Watford fans. Um... But I'll go for a 1-0 Burnley win. My next one, and this will be a game that I will be looking forward to um, after I come home. Um, it is Manchester City versus Chelsea. Oh my days. We're speaking about Pochettino getting sacked. 
What about Pellegrini? I'm saying, um, you know, but um, let's talk about, let's get the results out. Um, Chelsea beating Palace 2-0 at home. Man City losing 3-1 away from home to Liverpool. Yet again, I've had my VAR moan up, if you want to call it a moan up, but you can see where I'm coming from. Um, you know, this game, I think City have got, got to get back on the winning trail to even put the pressure on Liverpool. Um, but as far as this result goes, I'll go for a 2 0 Manchester City win. My next one is Sheffield United versus Manchester United. Right, um, let's get the results out first. Um, Sheffield United 1 1 at Tottenham. Great point for Sheffield United. Uh, May night being Brighton 3 1 at home. Now, this game is going to be interested for a load of reasons. Um, let's talk. I mean, let's go talk about United first. Um, the lights of them beating Brighton 3 1 at home. And like a lot of us say, um, is that just papering over the cracks? Um, I'm going to go against the odds. I'm going to have to, unfortunately. Um, my way of thinking, anyway. Just my opinion. You know, you all got your own piece. Feel free to put your opinions down below um, in the comments. But as I said when I talk about Brighton, Brighton had an off day. Fair enough, we all have them. Um, but you look at United, and I I look at United, bearing in mind I was born in uh, the late 90s. Um, you know, I look at United, the old United with me was class of 92. The Triple Champions League, FA Cup Premier League, all in one season. Um, you know, and I'll look back down to what we are now, and nothing's really changed. I mean, I don't know what has gone wrong at United. You know, I can't picture, you know, they're bringing their youth through. Greenwood looks like a good player. Rashford looks a bit out of sorts. Um, you know, uh, Lindelof, you know, he does have his off day as well. But, as far as this game goes, I'll go for a 2-0 Sheffield United win. My last one for this weekend is Aston Villa versus Newcastle. As, uh, Newcastle beating Bournemouth 2-1 at home. Aston Villa losing 2-1 away from home against Wolves. Um, Newcastle are on the up, I think, anyway. Um, you know, let's look, let's look at, if you're a Newcastle fan, please feel free to put comments down below as well, you know, have a bit of conversation. Um, but, Steve Bruce came in, um, you know, at the start of the season. Not many Newcastle fans gave him the chance. Um... As I said, it's all your own opinions. You know, I did a video on it when it happened. And I didn't give him much of a chance either. But beating Bournemouth, that's a big statement. A big statement. Even just doing it at home. Um, Philo, yeah, yeah, again, I think they've had a knowledge. Had a honeymoon period and it just came crashing down. Um... One thing that gets me with, well, it's not Villa because it's England, so I won't talk about that. But as far as this result goes, I'll go for a 2 2 scoreline for that one. 
But anyway, guys, you know what to do. Give it a big fat thumbs up if you enjoy it. Subscribe for more. Thanks for watching. Ciao for now.